In this session, we're going to be looking at what's known as the post-test loop. In the previous session, we looked at a pre-test loop where we actually check to see if we actually continue the loop. So we check first and then go, well, while it is this condition, we do the following. In a post-test loop, we actually at least carry out the operation once. So we do C until X equals 3. So we at least have to do C once before we check to see if we do it again. Unlike a pre-test loop, we may never carry out C if the condition is not correct. But in a post-test loop, you at least play once. So in an arcade game, this would be like, do you want to play again? Because you've already previously played the game, and then it asks you if you want to play again. So the, the lives in the game would be a pretest. While there is three lives, you keep continuing. Or while lives are greater than zero, you keep doing it. But in a post-test, it would be like, would you like to play again? You've already played the game, and then you can answer yes, and it'll go back and loop once more. Now, a post-test loop is, as it says, post-test. So it's on the end of the loop, the right-hand side of a loop. So it's at the post end of it. Pre-test is at the start of the loop. It also has a condition, and it's also represented by a curved line, where a straight line rep is represented of a fixed loop. The syntax is begin A, B, do C until X equals 3. So when X does equal 3, it actually stops the loop, and then the program will end. So once again, rather than having an end do, we've got an until statement. So sometimes you'll hear it referenced as a do until, or in some languages, do while. To give you an idea in syntax, if we let the number equal 10, do print number, so it'll output 10, let number equals number plus 10, so it now becomes 20, until number equals 50. Because it's not 50, it'll go back again to the do part. It'll print the number, it's now 20, adds 10 to it now, becomes 30. Because it's not equal to 50, it goes around again. Until it's 40, and then it's equal to 50, when it's incremented here, and then it'll actually go to finished. So let's have a look at our first example here. You notice that the loop actually goes across a number of lines. Therefore, inside this do structure, do until structure, there's going to be these components. So let's put a text box on screen and actually write a solution for the first one together. So first of all, we need to begin ghost, and we also need to end ghost. Now once we've done that, we can then go, well, what's the first part of ghost? Well, part of this is going to be a do statement, so we need to do, and we need to do this until scared equals true. So it has a boolean output. And what happens in that loop, we put in here. So we would actually screen. Um, screen. We need to run. We need to hide. And we need to be quiet. And we need to do all these until scared equals true. So we keep looping through screen, run, hide, quiet until the variable scared is equal to true. So as you can tell, this is the structure for a do until loop. Now in your solutions, you'll be looking at actually writing some. You notice that here we have a post-test loop, we have a pre-test loop, we have a fixed loop, and an if and else statement. So we're starting to use all the different types of structures. In the next one, you'll notice we've also got a case statement with a post-test loop in there. So be careful of that. Also, fixed iteration for an if statement. Because we're doing this for three times, we could actually go for three times if error or ERR equals yes, then exam else assignment, and if end for. So we could actually put the for or the if statement inside the for do statement. And in this question here, You've got a decision with a pretest loop on the true part and a post-test loop on the else part. And also above you've got a pretest and a post-test. And as you work down through these, you notice they get a little bit more tricky. But once you get the hang of actually working through the different structures, remember to work from left to right, layer by layer. 
So light would be the first begin end, then power would be second, third would be check sw or switch, fourth would be switch. So make sure you work left to right, layer by layer.